Hello and welcome back to another video where we shall be covering antiarrhythmic agents. Antiarrhythmics are drugs that are used in the management of cardiac arrhythmias. When we say cardiac arrhythmias, we mean abnormal heartbeats and heart rhythms. To define a cardiac arrhythmia, this is a change from the normal sequence of electrical impulses in the heart. It may be too fast, too slow, or erratic. We have a number of cardiac arrhythmias, for example, atrial fibrillation, bradycardies, tachycardia, conduction disorders, premature contraction, and ventricular fibrillation. Antiarrhythmic drugs suppress arrhythmias by blocking the flow through specific ion channels or by altering the autonomic function of the heart muscles. Antiarrhythmic agents or drugs are classified into four main groups this class 1 to class 4. Class 1 antiarrhythmic drugs are known as sodium channel blockers. We have three subclasses under class 1, that is class 1A, class 1B, and class 1C. In class 1A we have drugs for example procainamide and quinidine. Class 1B has lidocaine and mexilatin. Class 1C has flicanate and propafenone. The second class is class 2. This class 2 antiarrhythmic drugs are known as sympatholytic agents or beta adrenergic blockers. For example, propranolol, esmolol, sotalol, and acebutalol. The third class of antiarrhythmic agents are known to prolong action potential of the cardiac muscles. They include amiodarone, venacalant, dofetilate, and ibutrite. Then we have the last class, that is the class 4 antiarrhythmic agents, also known as calcium channel blockers, verapamil and diatazin. There are other types of antiarrhythmic drugs which don't fit the criteria to be placed into any of these four groups, and these are the miscellaneous antiarrhythmic agents known as adenosine, magnesium, and potassium. Let's then break down into each class. Class 1 antiarrhythmic agents, like we have said, are known as sodium channel blockers, and their action is mainly the sodium channel blockade. The class 1A are known to prolong action potential and dissociate from the channel with intermediate kinetics. Examples of drugs found in class 1A are procainamide, quinidine, and desopiramide. The second subclass of class 1 antiarrhythmic agents is class 1B. Class 1B antiarrhythmics work by shortening the action potential in some tissues of the heart and also dissociate from the channel with rapid kinetics as compared to class 1A which has intermediate kinetics. Examples of drugs in class 1B are lidocaine and mexilatin. Then class 1C have minimal effects of the action potential and dissociate from the channel with slow kinetics. Like we said, the classes or the examples of drugs found in class 1C are flicanate, morizin, and profifen. The class 1A antiarrhythmics exert the effect by blocking open or activated fast solid channels. Therefore, with this blockade, they do a state dependent blockade by blocking only the open or activated fast solid channels. They also block potassium channels therefore prolonging the reporalization duration, increasing action potential duration, and also effectively increasing the refractory period. An example of a class 1A drug is quinidine. Quinidine can cause muscarinic receptor blockage, which leads to an increased heart rate and atrioventricular conduction. They cause vasodilation. Quinidine causes vasodilation via the alpha blockage with the reflex tachycardia when they are used in the treatment of arrhythmias. They slow the upstroke of action potentials, slowing the conduction, and quinidine is known to prolong the QRS duration on the ECG. The most common adverse drug reactions associated with quinidine are synchronism, hypotension, prolongation of the QRS, and increasing of the QT interferon electrocardiogram and induction of actosadi depointes. Another example of drug in class 1A is procainamide. Procainamide is known to cause less muscarinic receptor blockage. 
it is metabolized via the N-acetyltransferase to an active form known as N-acetylprokinamide. Prokinamide also prolongs the QRS duration on an ECG. The common adverse drug reactions associated with prokinamide are a systemic low azithromycin like Reese syndrome, hematot of DZT, for example, thrombocytopenia, and agranulocytosis in the patient who are using prokinamide. Cardiovascular effects include a tosadi dipointis, a QT interval prolongation, and an induction of a tosadi dipointis arrhythmia, and sometimes when used, it can lead to syncope. The third example in a class 1A drug is disopyramide. Disopyramide is known to have similar effects as prokinamide. Class 1B antiarrhythmic drugs are known to block fast inactivated sodium channels. This blockade results in an increased threshold for excitation and less excitability of the hypoxic heart muscle. With this, we have reduced action potential due to blockage of so due to the blockage of slow sodium window currents. But this increases a diastole and extends the time for recovery. Examples of drugs found in class 1B are lidocaine and mexilatin. With lidocaine, it's known to block activated and inactivated sodium channels with rapid kinetics compared to mexilatin. Lidocaine is used in the management of post myocardial infarction, open heart surgery, digoxin toxic ventricular arrhythmias, and the most common side effects or adverse drug reactions associated with lidocaine are central nervous system toxicity, for example, seizures, and lidocaine is not to be the least cardiotoxic drugs in the antiarrhythmic classes because of its first pass effect. The second example of a class 1b antiarrhythmic agents is mexilatin. Mexilatin has a similar activity like lidocaine and is also available in oral formulations. Mexilatin is known to be used in the treatment of ventricular arrhythmias and it mexilatin has a half-life of about 8 to 20 hours Therefore, it can be given twice or three times per day at a usual dose of 600 to 1200 milligrams per day. Class 1C antiarrhythmics block fast sodium channels, especially the ones on the band of his Purkinje tissue. But this class of antiarrhythmics has no any effect on the action potential duration. An example of a class 1C antirhythmic is flaconide. Flaconide nowadays has a limited use because of its pro-arrhythmogenic effects that leads to an increase in sudden post-myocardial infarction deaths. It is a potent block of sodium and potassium channels with a slow and blocking kinetics compared to lidocaine. Flaconide is very effective in suppressing premature ventricular contractions and conduction slowing in reentrant circuits. The second example is a propafenol. Propafenol has similar structural similarities to propranolol and it's known to have weak beta blocking activity. It has a similar spectrum of action to that of quinidine and is used in the management of supraventricular arrhythmias, for example, supraventricular tachycardies. The most common side effects associated with propafenol is a metallic taste in the mouth and constipation. The second class of antiarrhythmic agents are known as class 2 antiarrhythmic drugs or sympatholytic agents. These drugs are known to have beta adrenergic blocking activity, therefore they reduce the beta adrenergic activity and have a direct membrane effect on the cardiac myocytes. They are commonly used in prophylaxis of postmyocardial infarction and in management of supraventricular dacarrhythmias or the SVTs. Examples of drugs in class 2 antiarrhythmic agents are propranolol, acebutolol, esmolol, and sotalol. Propranolol is known to be non selective beta blocker. With esmolol, it is a short acting beta blocker that is used in the intraoperative and other acute supraventricular tachycardia management. Sotalol, on the other hand, is a non selective beta blocking drug that is known to prolong the action potential. It is commonly used in the management of life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias and with its use 
there is an associated development of tosadis. This class 2 beta adrenergic receptor drugs or class 2 antiarrhythmic drugs are known to increase the CAMP activity, reduce the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodal activity. When they used, an abrupt discontinuation of chronic beta blocker receptor therapy can lead to rebound symptoms, for example, hypertension, increased nagenesis, and also development of new arrhythmias. Therefore, when you are stopping or you halting the use of beta blockers, you need to taper these doses over two weeks prior to the discontinuation of this beta receptor blocker therapy. therapy. The third class is class 3 antiarrhythmic agents. The class 3 antiarrhythmic agents have an action that manifests as a prolongation of the action potential duration. The class 3 antiarrhythmic agents manifest as a prolongation of action potential duration. Most drugs in class 3 antiarrhythmic agents block the rabbit component of the delayed rectifier potassium current and this leads to a slowed phase 3 of action potential known as the reporalization phase. Examples of drugs in class 3 antiarrhythmics are amiodarone, ibutylite, and dofetilite. With amiodarone, this is one of the unique classes that has all the effects that mimic each class from class 1 to class 4. Amiodarone is also known to increase the APD and the ERP in all cardiac tissues and it's used commonly in the management of any arrhythmias. Amiodarone is known to have a long half-life of more than 80 days and the common side effects associated with its use are pulmonary fibrosis, a blue pigmentation of the skin, these patients tend to be phototoxic, the corneal deposits, hepatic necrosis, and some thyroid dysfunction. Class 4 antiarrhythmic agents are also known as calcium channel blockers. This class of drugs work by blocking the cardiac calcium current, and this action slows the conduction in the regions where the action potential upstroke is the calcium dependent, for example, in the sinoatrial and atrioventricular node. Therefore, the reduced sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodal activity decreases the phase 0 and phase 4 activity. Examples of drugs in class 4 antirhythmic drug classes are verapamil and diatazem. These two agents are used in the management of supraventricular tachycardias, and the common adverse drug reactions associated, for example, with verapamil is constipation, flushing, hypotension, atrioventricular blockage, and velapamil is known to displace the joxin from its tissue binding sites. Like we mentioned earlier, there are some classes that replace any miscellaneous drugs because they don't fit any criteria into placement of these classes. For example, adenosine, potassium, and magnesium. Adenosine is known to activate adenosine receptors leading to a decoupled decrease in CAMP activity and is known to decrease sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodal activity. Therefore, they are used in the management of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardias. And the common adverse drug reactions associated with adenosine is flushing, sedation, and this kind of drug, adenosine, is antagonized by methyl xanthes, for example, aminophylline and theophylline. Another kind of miscellaneous antiarrhythmic agents is magnesium. With magnesium, we use it in the management of tosadis depointis. Thank you for joining us at the end of these tutorials. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more pharmacology 